Hi, today we're going to have a look at the Rostec VCDS PC package plugged into a 2019 VW T Rock. So we plug the interface into the car. So if we go into the auto scan function, and then we can click on start. The car's got a CAN gateway, so it automatically picks up what car it is and knows all the different systems from the CAN gateway to go and look at. So it pops up all sorts of different screens as it's going through the different systems, reading the systems, reading their fault codes and coding information. You'll get lots of different screens pop up and disappear as it works its way around the car. In the background it's building a list of all the information it's pulled from the car, which we'll see once it's finished doing its, uh, its searching. Depending on the car, some of the older languages and older cars, it can take quite a long time. But these can enabled vehicles, it's pretty quick to work its way around the whole car. You can see there's a couple of fault codes popping up here. We'll have a look at those in a sec. Okay, and that's it. So it's finished its report now. We can scroll down this list. You can see they're highlighted in red of the systems that have got fault codes. And as we scroll down this list, you can see it's saying no fault code found for most of the modules, but showing us the coding information, which is worth keeping. In case you ever lose any coding, you've got this record to paste it back in. So we keep scrolling down. And here we go, there's one red system here. So we've got a fault code there. Motors for central locking. We can go into the system and have a look at that in more detail. And there's the other system with the fault code, which again is the other side of the car, motors for central locking. So keep scrolling down, okay, moved off there, keep going to the bottom. That's the end of the report. And you can see all the different systems that it spoke to around the car. So we go back up to the top. Now what I'd recommend doing is saving a copy of this report just because it saves all the information in the car in case you do go in and tweak any uh, codings or try and switch on any hidden systems or anything. You've got the original codings then to fall back on if, if anything goes wrong. So I'll just save a copy of that. Now we can close this page. So let's go into the select control module now where we can go into each control module individually and have a look at more information. So if we start with the engine we are now going directly connecting to the engine. So we can actually now go and have a look at adaptations. So there's a drop down list here. We can see what adaptations are available for the engine. There's a good list there. So if we drop back out of that, we can go and look at basic settings to see what sort of basic settings and configurations are available for this engine. Another drop down list. Very good range of basic settings and adaptations in there. We can go back out of here, and if we close this controller, we're going to have a look in the ABS system. So again, if we go into basic settings and use a drop-down list, so a good list of the basic settings. So you've got, if you can see here, you've got some uh, of the parking brake functions, uh, which you're going to need if you want to change your rear brake pads. So that's the, um, the start and end lining change modes that you can see up there. They'll move the electric motors out the way so you can then do the pad changes on the rear as normal. So we'll drop back out of here and let's go and have a look at the uh, adaptations for the ABS, see what we've got in this list. 
Again, another good list of adaptations. Changing settings on some of the hill holds and things like that are in this list. So let's drop back out of here. I was going to have a look at the systems now where we had fault codes. So it's the driver's door electrics. We had uh, one of the fault codes. So let's go into that and have a look. So you can click on fault codes now to read the fault code. Right. Well, we'll clear that one because we don't know how long that's been there. So let's reset that and just see if it comes back at a later time when we scan the car. And again, in here, we've got basic settings and adaptations we can have a look at. Test sequences for the central locking and various other things. And adaptations again, another list. Drop out of here and let's go back and find it's the passenger sort the passenger side we had the other fault code. So we'll clear this fault code as well. We've got a record of it in the auto scan, so we'll know if it's the same one that comes back. Let's have a quick look in basic settings on here. And Got here and a quick look in the adaptations. Drop out of here. Now the last one I'm going to show you is the instrument cluster. So in the instrument cluster, if we have a look at the, um, the basic settings in here, so there's a range of different basic settings. More importantly, if we go into the adaptation, this list contains the functions that you need for, uh, well, it's a very long list in here, look at this. Um, but this contains the functions that you need to do the annual service light resets on the car. So near the top, if we have a look, uh, we'll have the resetting ECI function, uh, sorry, ESI function. Uh, there we go, ESI, re resetting ESI, that's the electronic service indicator. And then if you know you need to do it manually for any reason there's these uh, distance from inspection and some mileage from inspection functions that you can manually reset below but we can drop back to the main menu now but that's just a quick look around the vehicle using VCDS to give you an idea of some of the, the capabilities there's a lot more to VCS than this but if you've got any questions or want any more information on this product please contact us at gendan.co.uk